Here we are with another review for October. This is Costume Quest. And um, it comes with uh, the Scrubbins on Ice DLC, which I will talk about. But first, the main game. Um, I'll, I have, I'm going to start this review with a couple of nitpicks. Um, it is a good game, um, but I do like the game. I just want to start with a couple of nitpicks, just get them out of the way. Um, first of all is the mouse. It automatically detects the mouse uh, when you start up, so um, wherever it is, is what it's going to um, select. So, if I'm say, usually the mouse actually starts in the, in the, in the center of the screen, like right there. So if I go new game, or continue game, it's going to automatically select like the third or second option. So I think that's a little annoying. Uh, yeah. Um, it'd be nice if the mouse selection only picked things if you moved the mouse, you know? So anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to start a new game, costume, quest, slot 2, because I've got slot 1 all good to go. My second nitpick, which is the last of my nitpicks, is text in this game tends to move on its own. So like, there's no there's no voice over in this game. It just um, talks on its own like this, and the text is just scrolling on its own. It's going to the next text box on its text box on its own without any input from me, which I don't like because I would like to read at my own pace. And this is a little it's just like a couple seconds too fast for me. Uh, luckily, I realized like halfway through the game is that there is a pause button, which is not start. It is, on an Xbox controller, it is X for some weird reason. The X button. I don't know why it, it does that. But, I mean, uh, so basically what's going on here is the parents are telling kids they have to go trick-or-treating together. They're twins. Um, and they uh, like to fight, of course. And... Um, I think this game is is pretty comical. Um, so what starts here is you pick who is going to be quote in charge. You're playing. You're you're choosing basically who you're going to play as. And I pick the boy normally, of course, on my first try. But I'm going to go ahead and try the girl this time. Just see what what if anything's different. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, now, oh, no, it's still progressing on its own without my input. Um, so what's going to happen here is uh, you've got this neighborhood to explore. I'm going to go ahead and knock on the door. And it does that every time. It's got this intense uh, drum roll going up to before the person opens the door. And you'll see why in a second. So, um, on any given door... Um, wow. So, uh, he didn't like our brother's costume here. So we didn't get any candy. Pretty lame, right? He's going to go ahead and, and, and jump ahead to uh, the other house. And again, depending on who you select in the beginning, if you pick the boy, then, you know, the girl is wearing the dumb candy corn outfit. And, um... Basically, all the dialogue is more or less the same. It's just uh, the roles are switched. And here we get into the uh, story of the game. This is a monster. And... Unbeknownst to you and most of the people in the neighborhood, um, there are monsters invading the neighborhood. And this is your first uh, sight of them. They're here to steal candy, and uh, seeing how's, how uh, that kid is dressed up as a big piece of candy, he thinks, oh wow, this is a great score. I'm just going to take it and run. So... Um,
<laughs> Again, this this game does have some uh, comedic lines to it. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna take him to get through this. Uh, I can't skip dialogue at the same time. Start button does nothing. I can pause the game. But yeah. Um, so what you end up doing in this game is there you go through this first area. This your neighborhood is the first area of the game. And what you do is you go, um, there are some other kids to interact with, um, which include like side quests and things. Um, as it turns out, this is like an RPG game. There are turn-based battles, and um, what it is, is um, you actually get multiple costumes throughout this game, and the costume that you're wearing will determine your in-battle character. So as you see here with this like kind of comic book panel look presentation, uh, I'm now a ro an actual robot with like uh, robot powers. And the battles go... I already know how to fight, but um, the battles go where you have timed hits. So that bar was filling to where I had to press a button. Wow. Um, I missed that one. So yeah, you got X as your basic attack, um, Y button will be my missile barrage when it charges up. So the timed hits are button specific, and there are both offensive and defensive um, button prompts to hit. Um, so at, on your third turn in every battle, your Y button special will be charged up. And uh, there is no timing for this. This is an automatic freebie attack, which is usually pretty powerful. Uh, different characters, of course, have different abilities. Some are offensive, some are defensive. But um, when you finish the battle, you get uh, experience points and candy. And candy in this game is a type of currency. So um, there will be some things you can buy with candy. Um, what we're learning here is, um, this is sort of the main villain of the game. She's working for, um, the, uh, monsters. Actually, she's helping them. Is a more accurate way of saying it. She is human herself. I'm pretty sure she is, anyway. I think. Uh, she has actual magical powers. We just lost... Our costume. So what you're going to learn here is that um, wow that guy just crashed that car to block us off from that part of the game. I really wish I could skip this dialogue, get onto the game to show it off. Um, but we will get there in a minute. Okay, so, the way you get costumes in this game, there are two different ways. One way is someone will just give you the costume. Another, most of the time, you're collecting um, pieces of the costume to make it yourself. And what you'll see right here is there's a blueprint for that robot costume that we lost. And what we're going to do is go around the neighborhood real quick, and uh, not even go around the neighborhood when I go through this alley over here and find the pieces that we need. So, uh, what's fun about this game is you can uh, whack most things to uh, get candy out of them. Um, and that includes trash bags and uh, dumpsters. And then um, you'll see these like coffin looking things around. These hold, these are like a treasure coffin. These are like um, treasure chests, basically. And inside here we've got a cardboard box, which is a um, costume material. Here is some uh, aluminum foil. Again, most costume pieces are not found this easily. This is just for the very beginning of the game. And here is 
the rocket shoes. Oh, skate shoes. Roller skate shoes. And that will create our costume. Ta-da! And now we have the robot costume back. So what you see is that um, in the top right corner there is a B button with an ability. Um, not every costume, but most costumes have an uh, out of battle ability to use. In this case, the the robot costume is the most handy out of battle, which you will probably want to be using all the time. Is a um, it's an actual like a run. A super run. You basically use your shoes to run really fast because you have rocket boots, rocket sh rocket skate shoes. Um, and I just went over that ramp, which is an ability unique for the rocket skates. So what we're gonna find over here is uh, this kid's getting bullied. Oh, I can skip this dialogue. And we're going to challenge this kid to uh, chase me. He's got a skateboard. I got rocket skates. And all I'm going to do is go around the neighborhood real, here, real quick here. He's chasing after me because he's a bully. And I'm just going to go over this ramp down here. And that's the end of that. I show off like I'm really cool. The bully is... Um, what happens to the bully? He misses the ramp. And so, yeah. That's the end of him. In just a few more seconds, we'll be getting into the real game here. Because that kid that we just uh, rescued from the bully is going to join our party. And he's got some funny dialogue because he is like a D&D &D nerd. So all of his references are like fantasy references. He throws out like a, like a D20 references or something. He's got a knight costume, of course. Um, you can hold the right trigger to change costumes, if you so desire. The ability for the um, knight is the shield ability, which um, blocks um, stuff from above you. And that is basically only useful for um, certain places where there are falling, where there's, where there's falling debris. And, um, um, basically it's for environmental, you know, like things you have to get past. So if we talk about, if we talk to this guy, he's like, this is a private party for patriotic heroes. And he says our costumes celebrate science and the monarchy, and which is not at all patriotic. So, um. We go over to this other person and tell them um, we need their help, and it's a matter of manifest destiny. So, um, there's a, this is some good... Uh, I have a manifest destiny. You just talked about that. Um, so, I just got a costume pattern for the, for the uh, Statue of Liberty outfit, which will be our patriotic costume. So, as you can see, here are some uh, patterns that we have not yet found. We see that we need three pieces to make the costume. Um, here's our stat screen. Here are some battle stamps which we could equip if we had some. These are the things that you buy and equip to your characters. Like, um, hopefully, we'll get a couple of those real fast. But um, to show off the game, most of the game is is this: you're running around the, the area, and you're going to go trick or treating. And it's going to drum roll up. And here's a monster. So yeah, each house could be a monster or a human just, just gives you candy. But then, you know, the monster will initiate a battle. So what we got here is we got two party members now. We're gonna fight these guys. Basic attack, timing. For me, uh, getting the timed hits um, was a real struggle because um, they're all Xbox controller configurations. And uh, I'm used to more um, Nintendo stuff, which means the X and Y buttons are swapped, and then the A and B buttons are swapped. 
So, I would often press the wrong button doing this at the very beginning. I still have to wait like a second in my head to think it, like what button is that? But yeah, um, every third turn, um, our special gets charged up. You can save it, of course, and not use it. Um, the knights is a, you pick a party member and, uh, they are shielded for that, for, mm, a while? They have a shield. So look at that, did one damage because I got the timed hit for the block and I have the shield up, so, yeah. And the shield isn't just one turn, it looks like, so... Yeah. Our items that we got... We got new items at the bottom there. It would have been more fun if I had some battle stamps. Let me see if I can get some of those real quick. Here we go. Battle stamps. We can buy some battle stamps. So, I can only buy one. I've only got 206 pieces of candy. Um, let's go ahead and grab the Fang of the Wolf. Oh, it took me to an equip screen right after that and I just skipped over it. Um, so, here you press uh, the character button to equip it. So, A or X. And you only have one, so only one person can equip this, in this Fang of the Wolf battle stamp to increase their attack. And of course, there's tons of different stamps you can get. Which some add just like stat boosts, but some add like an extra ability, which lets you do things like stun the enemy or something like that, or give like poison damage, um, things like that. Here is our current quest log. On the right side, we have completed quests. On the left side, we have active quests. So yeah, trigger shaded houses, three out of 20. Um, you do need to go to all the houses in the neighborhood in order to move on to the next area. And in this in this base game, there are three areas, and then like the DLC is like an extra area, but it's like one longer extra area. I don't know. Maybe it's about the same length. Um, but yeah, this guy, you'll find him in each area, or at least a different guy in each area, and they do um this bobbing for apples mini game. Which is just, um, you know, you move around, bob for apples. Red apples are one point, and then green apples are like three points. The apples with worms in them are not good. So you kind of want to prioritize the green apples over the red ones. And then you get the number you need and the amount of time that you're given, and you pass. Um, there are rewards, of course, for this. I just got some candy. Um, you want to make sure you do this like three times. He'll tell you like after the third time that he doesn't have any more rewards for you, but you want to do it the three times to um, you know get all the rewards that you can. And of course, there are some random pieces of candy lying on the ground that are shiny that you can pick up. You can interact with these things, which doesn't do anything. As you can see, there is a treasure chest or coffin chest over here, which is oh, it's just candy in this one. Here's another house we could trick or treat at. I uh, don't know if it'll be human or monster. I'll take a try. That's oh, another monster. Okay. I swear there are like half of them are monsters, half of them are humans. But the human ones they just give you candy, so it's it's good to get those because you know candy will get you stuff, like those battle stamps. Ooh, these are some mage type enemies. Um, I believe you always go first in battle, so that's not the A button. That is. He's gonna cast a attack boost on himself. We're gonna try to kill him off so he doesn't do more damage. I've got some kind of burn status on me. Oh, so does he. It's kind of like a poison, but it's just fire burn. Now he's got it. 
I'm just gonna attack. And... Ah, oh, 8 damage. He did not die from the... Uh, damage alone. Alright. Oh yeah, the new items that you get. Level up! You now have more attack power and health in battle. So yeah, leveling up is a thing. Um, I got more attack and health. That's I think that's all you get anytime you level up is just more attack and health. Which I mean, that's that's all you need really, you know. All right, let me see. Okay, so the uh, items that you get are these creepy treat things, which do nothing on their own. They're like trading cards in this game, and this kid um, actually wants a specific one. Um, I, I'm not sure if they're random. I don't think so. But basically there is a monster out there that will drop it for you. Again, I don't think it's random, but it might be. I don't know. But I mean, if it is random, I'm pretty sure it's a guaranteed that you will get it from somebody. I don't know if it's necessarily the same monster every time. But, um, yeah, that is a thing. So this guy here, so what's the password? Manifest Destiny? Yeah. So anyway, right here, I got stuck on this for some reason, but um, there's water pouring down here and I don't want to go in there because I don't want to ruin my costume. See? My components, I mean my key components are cardboard. So what you really have to do is switch to the knight outfit. Use your shield. This is, the, this is the first instance where you have to use your shield, and it's like, I didn't even think about it. If you move over here, here's a little, little coffin chest, and it has a sheet, which is part of our Statue of Liberty costume that we're building here. So we get out over here, manifest destiny to open up our paths everywhere. Um, here's another coffin. So this guy can get out of the way. He gave us the last piece, and now we have our Statue of Liberty costume. Which we need our, our robot costume to go over this ramp, though. There we go. So if we say um, press left bumper, we can change his costume. We'll make him Statue of Liberty. And, okay, here I'll do one more house. If it's a monster, I'll cut. If it's a human, then we'll keep playing. Aha, good, the human. Yeah, so he's just gonna give us a bunch of candy. And the way that you know if you've been to a house or not is they turn their lights out after you visit them. They assume, oh, you're, you're out late. You're like the last kid that dropped by. So you know if you've done a house yet or not if the lights are out. This one has lights on, so we have not been there yet. There's also these kids hiding around in each area, um, playing hide-and-seek. So there's lots of uh, side quests to do. You know, you find all those kids playing hide-and-seek and you get like some extra stuff. Let's go ahead and see our patriotic outfit. Oh, here's a save point. I mean, the game saves at different parts of the game when you're just doing stuff, but um, if you just want to manually save, you come to these uh, phone police phone boxes, and, uh, yeah. There's another quest with, um, this teacher who's making pies, and you have to find, like, pie ingredients for her. Again, you can knock mailboxes and trash cans to get pieces of candy, which I think is funny. And again, you want to check all these houses to like trick or treat all of them. But I'm not going to do that because that's going to take some time. Alright, so we got our Lady Liberty outfit so we can get into the party. And all these kids are dressed as Abraham Lincoln. 
Oh, but there's only one she Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, so, um, oh, let me see if I can break through here. Party is finally off the hook because people are breaking stuff. <laughs> um, there's a, a squirrel, chipmunk or something. So we need a shield. We got some cherries, which is an ingredient for the pie that we're going to make. So yeah, you basically go through the game like this. Um, this first area is your neighborhood. The second area is um, like, it's actually like the mall, but it's like at night, which is pretty cool. Gave her those cherries. That first part, my first time, doing everything that I just did, it took me forever that first time because I didn't know I could shield to go into the water. And um, yeah, that was just, I don't know why it was hard for me, but it really wasn't that hard. You just, I just did it in like 20 minutes. There's another kid playing hide and seek. But yeah, um, again, knocking on doors, going into battle, those are the things that make up most of this game. Um, here's the options menu. I guess you can change the controls. I don't want to mess with any of that. You can change your uh, music volume levels, um, video, screen size. Thanks. Oh, you can even turn off stuff if you're having problems running the game on some lower settings. Use recommended settings. Right, get him, get me out of here. Of course, you can always go to credits, uh, achievements. You can look at. Oh, I've got twenty out of uh, twenty-one achievements. The one I'm missing is it's called "Tisn't the Season," and so you play the game on Christmas. So. I'm going to set a reminder for myself for that. I'm now going to jump ahead to, um, actually, okay, so the government's on Ice DLC. I guess I'll load up my file. Um, just to let you know, the, um, oh, there's some more costumes that uh, you're seeing. You're only seeing, yeah. But um, just basically to give you the gist of things, um, this is a post-game adventure. So it does take story um, beyond the, uh, the main game. There are a ton of costumes, like this pirate one, which you get specifically in this DLC game. And it lets you, like, swing across ropes and stuff. Basically, I guess I don't really talk about this at all. Just know that it is a continuation, uh, an extra chapter, if you want to say it that way. Um, uh, you do start this DLC with all of your, um, with all of the stuff that you have from the main game. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's a, it's a good game. I guess it's kind of on the easy side, but other than that, I mean, it's a good Halloween themed game. Uh, it's an RPG of all things, with turn-based battles and stuff. Uh, I, I guess I recommend it. I mean, there's not really anything problematic with it too much other than, you know, the, the scrolling dialogue, but you can pause the game as I found out halfway through. Uh, just know that so you can read all the dialogue if you're not fast enough. But that's Costume Quest. There is a sequel, and I'm going to look at that at a later date. But um, for now, um, if you think the review is helpful, go ahead and give the video a like. If you don't think it's helpful, you know, give it a dislike. But either way, leave a comment saying what you think of the video. And I will see you next time.